In late summer 1945, guests are gathered for the wedding reception of Don Vito Corleone's daughter, Connie and Carlo Rizzi. Vito, the head of the Corleone Mafia family, is known to friends and associates as Godfather. He and Tom Hagen, the Corleone family lawyer, are hearing requests for favors because, according to Italian tradition, no Sicilian can refuse a request on his daughter's wedding day. One of the men who asks the Don for a favor is Amerigo Bonacera, a successful mortician and acquaintance of the Don, whose daughter was brutally beaten by two young men because she refused their advances. The men received minimal punishment from the presiding judge. The Don is disappointed in Bonacera, who'd avoided most contact with the Don due to Corleone's nefarious business dealings. The Don's wife is godmother to Bonacera's shamed daughter, a relationship the Don uses to extract new loyalty from the undertaker. The Don agrees to have his men punish the young men responsible, in a non-lethal manner, in return for future service if necessary. Godfather. Good. Meanwhile, the Don's youngest son, Michael, a decorated U.S. Marine hero returning from World War II service, arrives at the wedding and tells his girlfriend Kay Adams anecdotes about his family, informing her about his father's criminal life. He reassures her that he is different from his family and doesn't plan to join them in their criminal dealings. The wedding scene serves as critical exposition for the remainder of the film, as Michael introduces the main characters to Kay. Fredo, Michael's next older brother, is a bit dim-witted and quite drunk by the time he finds Michael at the party. Santino, who is nicknamed Sonny, the Don's eldest child and next in line to become Don upon his father's retirement, is married, but he is a hot-tempered philanderer who sneaks into a bedroom to have sex with one of Connie's bridesmaids, Lucy Mancini. <laughs> Tom Hagen is not related to the family by blood, but is considered one of the Don's sons because he was homeless when he befriended Sonny in the Little Italy neighborhood of Manhattan, and the Don took him in and saw to Tom's upbringing and education. Now a talented attorney, Tom is being groomed for the important position of counselor to the Don, despite his non-Sicilian heritage. He's a good lawyer, like a counselor, an advisor, very important to the family. Also among the guests at the celebration is the famous singer Johnny Fontaine, Corleone's godson who has come from Hollywood to petition Vito's help in landing a movie role that will revitalize his flagging career. Well, give it to me, the head of the studio. Waltz. Waltz. Jack Waltz, the head of the studio, denies Fontaine the part, which will make him an even bigger star. But Don Corleone explains to Johnny, I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. The Don also receives congratulatory salutations from Luca Brasi, a terrifying enforcer in the criminal underworld, and fills a request from the baker, Nazarene, who made Connie's wedding cake, who wishes for his nephew Enzo to become an American citizen. You want Enzo to stay in this country and you want your daughter to be married. After the wedding, Hagen is dispatched to Los Angeles to meet with Woltz, but Woltz angrily tells him that he will never cast Fontaine in the role. Johnny Fontaine never gets that movie. Waltz holds a grudge because Fontaine seduced and ruined a starlet who Waltz had been grooming for stardom and with whom he had a sexual relationship. Waltz is persuaded to give Johnny the role. Now you get the hell out of here! However, when he wakes up early the next morning and feels something wet in his bed, he pulls back the sheets and finds himself in a pool of blood. He screams in horror when he discovers the severed head of his prized $600,000 stud horse cartoon in the bed with him. Upon Hagen's return, the family meets with Virgil, the Turk, Solozzo, who is being backed by the rival Tatalia family. He asks Don Corleone for financing as well as political and legal protection for importing and distributing heroin. Despite the huge profit to be made, Vito Corleone refuses, explaining that his political influence would be jeopardized by a move into the narcotics trade. I must say no to you, and I'll give you my reason. The judges and politicians he's allied himself with over the course of several decades would renounce their friendships with him if he were to enter the drug trade. The Don's eldest son, Sonny, who had earlier urged the family to enter the narcotics trade, breaks rank during the meeting and begins to question Solozzo's assurances as to the Corleone family's investment being guaranteed by the Tatalia family. 
His father, angry at Sonny's dissension in a non-family member's presence, silences Sonny with a single look and privately rebukes him later. Don Corleone then dispatches Luca Brasi to infiltrate Solozzo's organization and report back with information. During the meeting, while Brasi is bent over to allow Bruno Tataglia to light his cigarette, he is stabbed in the hand by Solozzo and is subsequently garroted by an assassin. Soon after his meeting with Solazzo, Don Corleone is gunned down in an assassination attempt just outside his office, and it is not immediately known whether he has survived. Fredo Corleone had been assigned driving and protection duty for his father when Pauli Gatto, the Don's usual bodyguard, had called in sick. Fredo proves to be ineffectual, fumbling with his gun and unable to shoot back. When Sonny hears about the Don being shot in Pauli's absence, he orders Clemenza, one of his father's two capo regimes, to find Pauli and bring him to the Don's house. Salazzo abducts Tom Hagen and holds him for several hours, persuading him to offer Sonny the deal previously offered to his father. When Tom is released, Salazzo gets word that the Don has survived the attempt on his life. He angrily tells Tom to convince Sonny to accept his offer. He's still alive. And bad luck for you if you don't make that deal. Enraged, Sonny refuses to consider it and issues an ultimatum to the Tataglias. Turn over Solozzo or face a lengthy, bloody, and costly, for both sides, gang war. They refuse and instead send Sonny a Sicilian message in the form of two fresh fish wrapped in Luca Brasi's bulletproof vest, telling the Corleones that Luca Brasi sleeps with the fishes. Clemenza later takes Pauli and one of the family's hitmen, Rocco Lampone, for a drive into Manhattan. Sonny wants to go to the mattresses, set up beds and apartments for Corleone button men to operate out of in the event that the crime war breaks out. On their way back from Manhattan, Clemenza has Pauli stop the car in a remote area so he can urinate. Rocco shoots Pauli dead. He and Clemenza leave Pauli and the car behind. Michael, whom the other Mafia families consider a civilian and not involved in mob business, visits his father at a small private hospital after having dinner with Kay at her hotel. He is shocked to find that no one is guarding him. A nurse tells him that the men were interfering with hospital policy and were told to leave by the police about 10 minutes before Mike's arrival. Realizing that his father is again being set up to be killed, he calls Sonny for help, moves his father to another room, and goes outside to watch the entrance. Michael enlists help from Enzo the baker, who has come to the hospital to pay his respects. Together, they bluff away Salazzo's men as they drive by. Police cars soon appear, bringing the corrupt Captain McCluskey, who viciously punches Michael in the cheek and breaks his jaw when Michael insinuates that Salazzo paid McCluskey to set up his father. Just then, Hagen arrives with private detectives licensed to carry guns to protect Don Corleone, and he takes the injured Michael home. Sonny responds by having Bruno Tataglia, the eldest son and underboss of Don Philip Tataglia, killed off camera. We hit Bruno Tataglia at 4 o'clock this morning. Following the attempt on the Don's life at the hospital, Solazzo requests a meeting with the Corleones which Captain McCluskey will attend as Salazzo's bodyguard. When Michael volunteers to kill both men during the meeting, Sonny and the other senior family members are amused. Then I'll kill them both. <laughs> <laughs> However, Michael convinces them that he is serious and that killing Salazzo and McCluskey is in the family's interest. It's not personal, it's strictly business. It's not personal, Sonny. It's strictly business. Because Michael is considered a civilian, he won't be regarded as a suspicious ambassador for the Corleones. Although police officers are usually off-limits for hits, Michael argues that since McCluskey is corrupt and has illegal dealings with Solozzo, he is fair game. Michael also implies that newspaper reporters that the Corleones have on their payroll would delight in publishing stories about a corrupt police captain. Michael meets with Clemenza, who prepares a small pistol for him covering the trigger and grip with tape to prevent any fingerprint evidence. He instructs Michael about the proper way to perform the assassination and tells him to leave the gun behind. 
He also tells Michael that the family were all very proud of Michael for becoming a war hero during his service in the Marines. You know, Mike, I was all proud of you being a hero. No? Clemenza shows great confidence that Michael can perform the job and tells him it will all go smoothly. The plan is to have the Corleone's informers find out the location of the meeting and plant the revolver before Michael, Solazzo, and McCluskey arrive. Before he leaves for the meeting, Sonny tells Michael he'll get word to Kay about not saying goodbye. Before the meeting in a small Italian restaurant in the Bronx, McCluskey frisks Michael for weapons and finds him clean. He's clean. After a few minutes where Michael and Solazzo converse in Italian, Michael excuses himself to go to the bathroom, where he retrieves the planted revolver. Returning to the table, he fatally shoots Solazzo, then McCluskey. <laughs> Michael is sent to hide in Sicily while the Corleone family prepares for all-out warfare with the five families, who are united against the Corleones, as well as a general clampdown on the mob by the police and government authorities. Three months later, when the Don returns home from the hospital, he is distraught to learn that it was Michael who killed Solazzo and McCluskey. It was Michael who killed Solazzo. Meanwhile, Connie and Carlo's marriage is disintegrating. They argue frequently over Carlo's suspected infidelity and his possessive behavior toward Connie. By Italian tradition, nobody, not even a high-ranking mafia Don, can intervene in a married couple's personal disputes even if they involve infidelity, money, or domestic abuse. One day, Sonny sees a bruise on Connie's face, and she tells him that Carlo hit her after she asked him if he was having an affair. Sonny tracks down and severely beats Carlo in the middle of a crowded street for brutalizing the pregnant Connie, and threatens to kill Carlo if he ever harms Connie again. An angry Carlo responds by plotting with Tatalia and Don Emilio Barzini, the Corleone's chief rivals, to have Sonny killed. Later, Carlo has one of his mistresses phone his house, knowing that Connie will answer. The woman asks Connie to tell Carlo not to meet her tonight. The very pregnant and distraught Connie throws a tantrum, throwing the plates with their dinner around the dining room and kitchen. Carlo takes advantage of the altercation to beat Connie in order to lure Sonny out in the open and away from the Corleone compound. When Connie phones the compound to tell Sonny that Carlo has beaten her again, the enraged Sonny drives off, alone and unprotected, to fulfill his threat against Carlo. On the way to Connie and Carlo's house, Sonny is ambushed at a toll booth on the Long Island Causeway and violently shot to death by several carloads of hitmen wielding Thompson submachine guns. Tom Hagen relays the news of Sonny's massacre to the Don, who calls in the favor from Bonacera to personally handle the embalming of Sonny's body. Rather than seek revenge for Sonny's killing, Don Corleone meets with the heads of the five families to negotiate a ceasefire. Not only is the conflict draining all their assets and threatening their survival, but ending it is the only way that Michael can return home safely. Reversing his previous decision, Vito agrees that the Corleone family will provide political protection for Tataglia's traffic in heroin, as long as it is controlled and not sold to children. At the meeting, Don Corleone deduces that Don Barzini, not Tatalia, was ultimately behind the start of the mob war and Sonny's death, despite showing early signs of senility. In Sicily, Michael patiently waits out his exile, protected by Don Tomasino, an old family friend. Michael aimlessly wanders the countryside, accompanied by his ever-present bodyguards, Kalo and Fabrizio. In a small village, Michael meets and falls in love with Apollonia Vitelli, the beautiful young daughter of a bar owner. They court and marry in the traditional Sicilian fashion, but soon Michael's presence becomes known to Corleone enemies. One day, while Michael is teaching his new bride to drive, Tomasino brings the bad news about Sonny's assassination. He wants to movie Michael to a safer location. As the couple is about to leave, Apollonia is killed as a result of a rigged car, originally intended for Michael, exploding on ignition. Michael, who saw the car explode, spots Fabrizio hurriedly leaving the ground seconds before the explosion, implicating him in the assassination plot. In a deleted scene, Fabrizio is found years later and killed. With his safety guaranteed, Michael returns home. 
More than a year later, in 1950, he reunites with his former girlfriend Kay after a total of four years of separation. Three in Italy and one in America. He tells her he wants them to be married. Although Kay is hurt that he waited so long to contact her, she accepts his proposal. With Don Vito semi-retired, Sonny dead, and middle brother Fredo considered incapable of running the family business, Michael is now in charge. He promises Kay he will make the family business completely legitimate within five years. Two years later, Clemenza and Salvatore Tessio complain that they are being pushed around by the Barzini family and ask permission to strike back, but Michael denies the request. He plans to move the family operations to Nevada, and after that, Clemenza and Tessio may break away to form their own families in the New York area. Michael further promises Connie's husband Carlo that he will be his right-hand man in Nevada, unaware of his part in Sonny's assassination. Tom Hagen has been removed as consigliere and is now merely the family's lawyer, with Vito serving as consigliere. Privately, Hagen inquires about his change in status and also questions Michael about a new regime of soldiers secretly being built under Rocco Lampone. Don Vito explains to Hagen that Michael is acting on his advice. Another year or so later, Michael travels to Las Vegas and meets with Mo Green, a rich and shrewd casino boss looking to expand his business dealings. After the Don's attempted assassination, Fredo had been sent to Las Vegas to learn about the casino business from Green. Michael arrogantly offers to buy out Green but is rudely rebuffed. Green believes the Corleones are weak and that he can secure a better deal from Barzini. As Mo and Michael heatedly negotiate, Fredo sides with Mo. After Mo storms out of the meeting, Michael warns Fredo to never again take sides with anyone against the family. And I love you, but don't ever take sides with anyone against the family again. Michael returns home. In a private moment, Vito explains his expectation that the family's enemies will attempt to murder Michael by using a trusted associate to arrange a meeting as a pretext for assassination. Vito also reveals that he had never really intended a life of crime for Michael, hoping that his youngest son would hold legitimate power as a senator or governor. Some months later, Vito collapses and dies while playing with his young grandson Anthony in his tomato garden. At the burial, Tessio conveys a proposal for a meeting with Barzini, which identifies Tessio as the traitor that Vito was expecting. Changing a meeting in Brooklyn. Tessio's ground. Kay asks Michael if he'll agree to be godfather to Connie and Carlo's newborn son. Michael agrees and seizes the opportunity to eliminate competition from the other five families while also using the baptism as an alibi. The murders occur simultaneously during the ceremony. Don Stracci is gunned down along with his bodyguard in a hotel elevator by a shotgun-wielding Clemenza. Mo Green is killed while having a massage, shot through the eye by an unidentified assassin. Don Cuneo is trapped in a revolving door at the St. Regis Hotel and shot dead by soldier Willie Cicci. Don Tataglia is assassinated in bed, along with a prostitute, by Rocco Lampone and an unknown associate. Don Barzini is killed on the steps of his office building along with his bodyguard and driver, shot by Al Neri, disguised in his old police uniform. After the baptism, Tessio believes he and Hagen are on their way to the meeting between Michael and Barzini that he has arranged. Instead, he is surrounded by Willy Chichi and other button men as Hagen steps away. Realizing that Michael has uncovered his betrayal, Tessio tells Hagen that he always respected Michael and that his disloyalty was only business. He asks if Tom can get him off for old time's sake, but Tom says he cannot. Tessio is driven away and never seen again. It is implied that Sichi shoots and kills Tessio with his own gun after he disarms him prior to entering the car. Meanwhile, Michael confronts Carlo about Sonny's murder and forces him to admit his role in setting up the ambush, having been approached by Barzini himself. The hitmen who killed Sonny were the core members of Barzini's personal bodyguard. Michael assures Carlo he will not be killed, but his punishment is exclusion from all family business. He hands Carlo a plane ticket to exile in Las Vegas. However, when Carlo gets into a car headed for the airport, he is immediately garroted to death by Clemenza on Michael's orders. Later, a hysterical Connie confronts Michael at the Corleone compound as movers carry away the furniture in preparation for the family move to Nevada. 
She accuses him of murdering Carlo in retribution for Carlo's brutal treatment of her and for Carlo's suspected involvement in Sonny's murder, and that Michael craftily waited until their father died so Vito couldn't stop him. After Connie is removed from the house, Kay questions Michael about Connie's accusation, but he refuses to answer, reminding her to never ask him about his business or what he does for a living. She insists, and Michael outright lies, reassuring his wife that he played no role in Carlo's death. Kay believes him and is relieved. The film ends with Clemenza and new Capo regimes Rocco Lampone and Al Neri arriving and paying their respects to Michael. Clemenza kisses Michael's hand and greets him as Don Corleone. As Kay watches, the office door is closed.